वेलकम टू मेन स्ट्रीम विद हरप्रीत सिंह टूर आप सब नु प्यार भरी सत श्री अकाल नमस्कार आदाब एंड शलोम वेल टुडे इज द फर्स्ट डे ऑफ न्यू इलेक्टेड ऑफिस बेयरर्स टू टेक देयर ओथ इन वाशिंगटन डीसी बट बिफोर दे डू इट दे हैव टू इलेक्ट अ स्पीकर केविन मकार्थी हु हैज बीन वर्किंग to be the speaker and he went to the extent of uh, kissing the ring of the king uh, even though after january 6 insurrection in 2020 he went to maralago to uh, compromise and uh, basically bow to the whims of that uh, the former president donald trump even though trump has endorsed him to be the pre- uh, speaker of the house but he has not succeeded in getting the votes and in more than 100 years this is the first time that it has happened the vote took place three times and they still haven't succeeded they have taken a break so we will keep you posted if something happens during uh, my hour of uh, this program if not then probably tomorrow we will have another chance to talk about it what's going on and uh, to look at some of the nitty gritty stuff uh, i have uh, with me uh, you you are familiar with the face uh, he has been on the show before uh, charlie zalban and he has uh, he's a film producer a uh, very good friend of mine very good friend of uh, sikh uh, punjabi community uh, we actually you know sort of like um, complement each other in a way that uh, we have lot of habits which go together but when it comes down to certain things uh, talking about honestly about the issues he is one of them uh, who will and who does talk like that uh, straight on your face sometimes people may not like it but uh, that is their problem not the problem of the person who is saying it because the person who is saying is is saying what you need to hear not what you want to listen actually it is like what do you need to listen then what you want to listen so that's what it is and uh, let me uh, first say hello to him let's uh, bring him on board hi charlie how are you good how are you harpreet i'm doing good uh thanks for coming in first of all you know uh demar hamlin uh, the uh, buffalo's defense player who went into cardiac arrest yesterday um we know that football is a dangerous game but uh, this is something rare which happened um, you know our prayers are there with the family and everybody and uh, we don't know how much damage is done as based on what i heard that he was on life support uh, he was not breathing on his own not the life support he was not breathing on his own not yet at least so we'll see how it comes out so uh, coming to american politics um because i know uh, i have him for till about uh, 6:30 or so so i want to head straight into it and then we'll talk some of the other things all right charlie um let's talk um, what is happening in the congress three times they voted for to elect the speaker they have not succeeded can you put some light on, uh, on it and tell me what's going on Well, to put it simply, the Republicans who are power hungry and you know were striving to get control of the House and the Senate have no idea of how to govern, and they are in total disarray. And that is upsetting the apple cart of the media because over the last forty uh, years or so they've been. relishing the idea of saying the democrats are are in disarray and don't know how to get themselves organized and now the script is flipped uh charlie do me a favor your head is i see it is on the top it is cutting a little bit if you can adjust the screen uh, i have no image uh <laughs> you have no image uh yep. move back a little bit uh oh little bit and down little bit if you are sitting on the chair 
have you have it horizontal or you have uh, vertical your phone no it's horizontal it's horizontal okay it's already horizontal uh, you want to okay you want to adjust like this with the phone a little bit moving that phone which way like that? Uh, yeah a uh, little bit more that way yeah no just do it bo a bit more I can see your forehead a little bit more that's it perfect okay stay there okay <laughs> yeah now we can talk okay so uh, we have been talking about you know I'm reading about it that this hasn't happened for more than 100 year and uh, I lost uh, yeah it hasn't happened for 100 year and uh, it has happened again after 100 year that uh, newly elected Congress has not been able to elect the speaker. I don't know whether last time it was Democrat or Republican. It was actually the Republicans that couldn't get their act together. At that time also? Yep. Ah. And, and the Democrats are saying the same thing. It's not their responsibility to help the Republicans out, basically. No, that is true because, uh, you know, uh, during the election, they were hammering the Democrats for everything which was not uh, true. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's both ways. Democrats were also saying few of the things, but at least there was an agenda which was achieved by Joe Biden in 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the question comes that we have a divided uh, government now. House controlled by Republicans, Senate by Democrats, and uh, <clears throat> uh, White House by Democrats. How the House Republicans are going to get anything done? That's my question. Well, they're not. And the fact of the matter is, because of the uh, makeup of the House Republicans, you know, each individual person and how they all work together as a group, you can see how dysfunctional they are right now today where they can't even make the major decision, first decision. So I don't think anybody going into this year expected anything to actually get done other than uh, a handful of people who have enough you know, because, because the, the, um, the, their majority is so slim that all it takes is five people to disrupt everything. And those five people are going to have an audience on whatever TV outlet that they want. Because, and they're all, all they're going to do is be making noise and um, hoping to raise more money for themselves. And uh, that's... That's what we're going to look at for the next uh, two years, basically. Well, there is, there is another question which I have. Uh, uh, if they can't elect the speaker, and he's already compromising a lot of things. I was going through certain things which he has compromised, even uh, giving the power that uh, during, once you get, it was like once you get uh, elected as a speaker, you are speaker till either you resign or you lose that uh, house or something untoward happen and you are not there anymore to take care of it. Now the, he has given the power that he can be called back at any time. Right. So how he can actually convince someone if he has to have the argument. You know, I was comparing um, uh, Nancy Pelosi with the, what is happening now. When in 2018, Democrats took the power, everybody was saying, oh, Nancy Pelosi cannot be, she will not be, da, 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 da. And all of a sudden, she was the speaker. She knew how to handle, she knew how to convince and how to bring the agenda. And right. she was smart enough to leave at the right point to giving, you know, to Hakeem Jeffries, uh, as the leader of the Democratic uh, minority leadership. When you compare Nancy Pelosi with what is coming in, how they can get anything, whatever they are talking about? Well, <laughs> you can't. I mean, they're not even in the same class. You know, she is a giant. 
and they are basically the gum on the bottom of her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know that is they that that is I mean, true. Listen, they can't even discipline somebody who is a liar because they are so worried about having the the votes that you are, they you're talking about allowing. Josh Santos. But yeah. <laughs> you know, I I was just looking at a piece from uh, Tom Swazi that uh, he served for more than 30 years in public service being the mayor of Glen Cove, then the executive of Nassau County, then the congressman, and then he ran for the governorship. I don't know why he decided to leave the cong congressional uh, seat to run for the governor, but he is right when he says that this person, George Santos, who cannot even take the oath yet because the speaker is not there yet, but he definitely will be a, a congressman. He will be called congressman. How he can provide the services to the constituents when Sorry, he's lying I, to I, the hilt? Uh, can you repeat that, please? I didn't hear uh, you. I said, how he can provide the services to the clients uh, if he's lying to the hilt and everything, every time he opens up his mouth, he's lying. Right. I, but I, I've read this and I know everybody seems to be ignoring it. You know, the only requirement in the Constitution to be a congressman is to be 25 years old and to be a citizen. So far... I can't even believe that he's a citizen. <laughs> and well, nobody's asking, you know, you know what, where is naturalization papers? Yeah, what really surprised me is that all of a sudden after he got elected, everything is coming out. Why not before that? Is there something, you know, which the media also needs to learn their lessons, even though they talk about that we are free, we talk about, we do investigative reporting, we do blah, blah, blah. But in this scenario, I think they not 100% failed, but they failed to come up at the right time. Well, I, I, I understand that some of the local media papers uh, in um, uh, Great Neck or uh, Lake Success uh, were on to Santos and were reporting on it. And Zimmerman, who was running as a Democrat, also said he was trying to get air, you know, airtime and say it. But you take the large media outlets like the New York Times, uh, the Post, the Daily News, they were so caught up in this whole false narrative of the red wave. And they had to prove that they've been selling for the last two years. And of course, in my opinion, they felt like they had to prove that they were correct. So they ignored <laughs> other things that would prove that their analysis was incorrect and ignored the things that might have made a difference when um, uh, people went out to vote. Because I think most people are don't pay attention to politics the way I do or you do. Well, and that, that is true. Uh, get a headline. Yeah, let us, let us uh, go for a break. After the break, I will be right back because I want to talk about when we come back about this red wave. Uh, everybody was talking about red wave in the media, whether it was left or right or the middle. But there was no red wave and no blue wave either because we have been here at Just Punjabi. I know um, being part of the political program at Just Punjabi, I have been talking about it. We will just talk about it right after the break. Welcome back to uh, Mainstream on Just Broadcasting. I'm Harpi Singh Tour. Uh, we're talking about red wave uh, at the break time. So, uh, Charlie, are you there? <clears throat> Here, yes. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the red wave. What red wave? Uh, I don't understand, man, because I'm a foreigner. See, I always say I'm a guy with a turban, uh, alien. I got through so many things. So make me understand what the media, main media was talking about. Okay. Historically, over the last mm, 85 years or so, 
uh, 90 years, I should say, uh, since FDR. <clears throat> the um, in the midterm in the midterm elections, you know, mm -hmm. two years after the presidential election, uh -huh. the party of the president in mm -hmm. in the, in the White House at that time usually loses seats. Mm -hmm. So you wind up having divided government. Uh huh. Uh, now, I think back with in the 30s with FDR, the Democrats maintained control because the Democrats basically maintained control of the House of Representatives for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about recent history over the last 30 years that the Republicans have maintained control of the House and the Senate, except for four years in the aughts and four years now when the Repu when the democrats had control over the house and um <clears throat> so what they mean by the red wave is that there was an anticipation from the time biden got elected that and because the senate majority and the house majorities for the democrats was so narrow they felt the, you know the prognosticators in all the media said well the republicans are going to win and the, and they should it will probably be a landslide against the democrats and so biden will be up against it uh with a republican house and a republican senate will he be able to get anything done Will he be able to get anything done in the, in the two years that, he, that he's been president so far? Well, it seems that they neglected to realize how adept President Biden has been. And there are many, many accomplishments of the Democratic House and the Democratic Senate has over the last two years. Now, you won't find that in the media that much because that doesn't kind of fit their prognostication of a red wave coming and they also know that the republicans are very punitive so if they didn't kowtow to the republicans in the two years before the midterm election which just passed a month ago a month and a half ago that they would be shut out so you can see different media outlets hiring people hiring republicans so that they can have access and maintain that but there was an author named Upton Sinclair who once said, you can never trust someone whose salary, uh, you can't expect someone to understand whose salary depends on not understanding. <laughs> so, the, I like that. You know, <laughs> what? I like right. that. <clears throat> you no, know, and that's when you look at the media, that salary has depended on not understanding that there are other elements going on besides their expectation of a red wave. You know, it's so a, they missed it. It's interesting that uh, you know even Newt Gingrich, he made a point that do not underestimate Joe Biden. And when we look at uh, <clears throat> this uh, omnibus bill, which was passed on the last day of the session, there were 18 Republican senators who voted to pass it, even though Kevin McCarthy was saying, no, no, don't do it, don't do it, we will take the business on 3rd of January. Mm -hmm. And Mitch McConnell, who actually, uh, you know, I got to congratulate him. Where, you know, I always say like that, I love him, but I don't like his policies. Right. You know? So he just uh, became the longest serving uh, majority or minority leader of Republicans uh, as of today. He actually was the one who wanted that to pass. McCarthy did not. And now it shows that why uh, Mitch McConnell was right. Mitch McConnell was right before the elections when he uh, talked about uh, weak candidates or uh, candidates, uh, Republican candidates with the, um, you know, um, shady characters. And now right. he, he did this. So how still the Republicans in the House, they are still underestimating Joe Biden. 
when they talk about we will, we will drag him, we will do, drag his son, we will do this, don't they have anything else also to talk about besides this? No, they don't have any. They don't have, they've, they've been running the, the same strategy for the last approximately 50 years. You know, How they can be countered is, then? What? How somebody can counter or they can, you know, uh, somebody can say the king has no clothes, that a Republican, somebody can show them the mirror and tell them that, guys, look at what you guys are doing. You better start doing something. Well, the only way that they're going to learn is by them keep losing elections. And I don't think we, even though they, I, I would say they lost this last election. I know you said that there was no blue wave, but actually, <clears throat> if it wasn't for the redistricting, redistricting in New York State, the Democrats probably would have held the House. And um, Fair. Uh, I agree. You know, so they, the Republicans ha are arrogant and feel like they're entitled, and they don't feel that the Democrats are a legitimate party. So if you look at the last... 50 years, mm -hmm. they've always acted as if that if a Democrat had won the House or the Senate or the House, the White House, the Senate or the House, then it was an aberration and then they were not entitled, they were not legitimate. And all their actions show that they don't feel that uh, a Democrat or a de the Democratic Party is a legitimate organization. And so, since you don't, ha since the Democrats do not have a an honest broker on the other side to actually deal and negotiate, it's going to be incumbent on the Democrats to just keep winning elections and beating them up. That's the, and as long as if they keep losing, they may or may not change. But I think that there's a hardcore of, of Republicans who will never change because they just. Well well, they the, just don't see it. Let me let me ask you this question. But in the meantime, they control so many state chambers. On the national level, for the national election, for the House of Representatives, U.S. Senate, White House, I understand that. But in the meantime, except this time, you know, I think after 40 years, Michigan is all Democrat. Thanks right. to those people who wanted to kidnap the governor and, you know, uh, whatever they wanted to do, whether keep her somewhere or, you know, kidnap her family, kill or whatever it was. I mean, those kind of things, including the attack on the Capitol, which they are saying those were peaceful people. Now, my question, I have actually two questions here. And uh, then we will going for the break and then probably I have to, you know, uh, can you stay uh, another 10 minutes? Sure. Okay. So let me divide these both questions. First, that how January 6 attack on the Capitol, the people, the House of Representatives from the Republican side who said those were peaceful or who kissed the ring of the king, they still got reelected. Most of them, including uh, Green and Bobert. How come? Oh, how come they got reelected? Yeah. Well, first of all, Bobart just made it. She probably, I think she won by a thousand votes. Yeah, but still she won, well, you know, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I don't think there's any one specific reason. I have a couple of thoughts about it. Yeah, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> one is the redistricting. Uh -huh. So that in the states that are controlled by the Republican legislatures, they redistrict based on to make sure that the Democrats are uh, not distributed evenly. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, so that the Republicans have an advantage that way. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is, let's say they're uh, in, like in Wisconsin, there's a 50, basically a 50, 50 split between Republicans or, and Democrats or actually more, I think there's 55, 45, mm -hmm. but because of the way Republicans control the half, their legislature and the way they redistricted, they get 65% of the votes, of the seats. Mm -hmm. So 
it's a minority. They they jam all the Rep- Democrats into one district. Mm-hmm. So instead of getting an even distribution of votes, they only get one vote out of five or whatever, you know, whatever the percentage is. You know, and that's what happened in Florida. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they redistricted. And now, you know, when they might, when the Democrats might have picked up a seat or two before, they were they couldn't get it now. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is you have a lot of people who will go out and vote and they're only looking at headlines. And the um, Republicans have been good at, at, at getting triggers, you know, react, making sure that they say certain things that get a trigger reaction out of people. And the Democrats so far over the last 40 years have not counted it well enough. Mm-hmm. So that they're still stuck with old images of the, of you know themselves without ca- changing it yet, and that's what I think the Democrats have to do in the next you know couple of years. You know, in, in, let's say two to four, ele- two to three election cycles going forward. That's you know two to six years out. That they have to change uh, how what the perception is of who they are which is more real, realistic than the uh, phony triggers that the Republicans have. Well, the, you know... You know um, like when they say that, you know, they talk about socialism and this. I mean, it, it sounds kind of humorous, but those things that they say create a trigger reaction to people in people's minds so they don't, they don't trust the Democrats to necessarily vote for them. So that... And I, I tend to feel that people are brand oriented so that they go to the default brand if they are unsure about the um, going to another one so even if they don't like their current brand which is republicans they're not they're not going to go to the democrats to um uh, because they don't they don't trust them either so they'll okay. go save the now, Republicans. Now, now my next question to you is uh, when it comes down to, you know, um, some of the rights, especially the women rights, Republicans are dictating that. There was a time when Democrats were also dictating, even when uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi came in as a freshman to the House of Reps. Uh, she was even shrugged off uh, by some of the Democrats, but Democrats have learned from you know and what the inclusive means and republicans on the other hand they talk about that we are a part we are a big tent party but that big tent is only for extremists not for people like you and me not for uh, punjabis and uh, uh, jews and or jewish if I may say, <laughs> <laughs> let me, let, the they, I now, just right? got, hold on, I just got a signal to take a break after the break. I want you to answer this question that how this thing can be or would it be sorted out at all regarding George Santos and how to move forward to take America where America should be because Trump definitely did the damage to the standing of America, and we are still recovering from that. After the break, we will talk about that um, in a minute. Welcome back to Mainstream on Just Broadcasting. I'm Harpreet Singh Tour. All right, Charlie. So uh, you have that question. You heard the question. Give me the answers. <laughs> Do you mind repeating it one more time, please? Uh, my question basically is for the people like George Santos and those. Uh, even President, uh, former President Trump, what he did, how the law will take the, its course and bring these people to justice. And uh, that level of uh, confidence in uh, American democracy will be reestablished. Even though uh, people are not, people are worried about, uh, they were more worried about losing it as compared to now they are less worried about it. But they are not, we are not where we should be. So what do you think will take and how long it will take before we will really regain where we were and move forward for equality? 
Well, I think that's happening as we're as we're talking, actually. But I mean, the the steps are so small that it's hard for people to see it. I think um, there. I. It's what you're asking is very complicated to answer. In my, you know, for my for my thoughts, but I'll mm-hmm. try to s- streamline it if I can. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, because I was thinking about this on the break. Ruth Bader Ginsburg once said that real change happens one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And because of the way our the American system works is 50% plus one. So we can only make change as fast as the slowest person. So we have to make sure that, and because the Democratic Party is a coalition, we have to make sure that we have the coalitions put together for the different uh, goals that we have. Mm -hmm. And if we lose sight of that, which we have in the past, uh, then nothing will get done. But nothing will happen in a a fast period of time, but it's step-by-step doing it. I think there are a number of things that point to that. I think... I, I, this may sound far afield, but I think what's going on in the Ukraine is having a major impact globally and in terms of the stature of the United States internationally. Um, also, just to backtrack a minute, I think uh, President Biden has been uh, just right for our time and will be right going forward. Uh, I'm really annoyed at people and their ageism and saying he's too old because of uh, they want to see a new shiny object. But I never really appreciated his point of view until the primaries in 2020. And because the media finds it easier to create a fight so it's always been easier for them to portray the Democrats as being either progressive or moderate or conservative progressives, uh, progr- conservative Democrats, rather. So, and they try to pigeonhole people that way because it's easier for them to write stories by having those boxes to fill in. And since they are basically paying by the word and the clicks, then it makes it easier for them to keep producing every day. But the thing with Biden that I think a lot of people ignore is the fact that he, I think he can be the most progressive president that we've ever had, but he's also tactically the smartest one that we've had recently because he seems to know where the middle is and that's the way he tries to get things done. And I think that's the primary reason why he's gotten so many legislative accomplishments over the last two years. I, I, people- I uh, hold your thoughts there. I happen to agree with you on that because I haven't seen Joe Biden to take positions on extreme left at all. Have you? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Have you, you seen him do what? Yeah. Have you seen Joe Biden any position with the extreme left where, you know, uh, they were talking about uh, the woke and, and against the uh, against the police, defund the police. He never talked about it. He always said, we need the police to protect us. That's the Joe Biden. <clears throat> right. But the point is that the people who are saying those things have their own agenda. They're not thinking about, in my opinion, they're not thinking about how to move forward collectively they're looking at certain particular agenda items and and it's been very easy to uh typecast uh the democratic party and for the republicans to create triggers around those policies that people were expressing not very well in my opinion that so that they make it seem that the Democratic Party has never changed, and that's what people distrust. And they, that's why we've lost votes in different areas, because 
they they've been able to portray the Democratic Party as the party that you really can't depend on um, in certain areas. In other areas, that that isn't the case. Uh, but I think Biden has been a, knows where the middle ground is, and if you look at everything that he's done. Mostly, you know, maybe there are, are a few uh, things that he's always been able to pull things off because he knows how to get the 50% plus one. Well, that is true. Uh, before you go, I would like to ask you, what is your prediction about uh, the speakership of the House and what you expect in the next 24 to 48 hours? Oh, geez. I don't really <laughs> care. <laughs> you know, because, I mean, what I would like to see is that some Republicans can go over and vote for Hakeem Jeffries. You know, you know, six of them go over. I mean, if the, the uh, Democrats in New York State were to put pressure on the four, uh, uh, I guess, three Congress people, I don't think uh, George Santos would do anything that uh, they would uh, vote for Hakeem Jeffries and might, might be better off. But um, I don't really know. I mean, the, you know, you know I can't put it nicely. Mm -hmm. One is worse than the other. <laughs> One Republican is worse than the other. So for them to tear each other up and to look like, fools is I don't have any problem with that. I'll just sit back and wait for them to decide. It's not the Democrats responsibility to fix the Republicans, even mm -hmm. though it would be great. I understand how creative uh, tension works that you have opposing angles, points of view and that you can hash it out but you need two sides that are honest with each other and you don't have that. You know, Until the uh, Republicans can change that you're never going to have it. Yeah, there is one thing which I, I was just uh, looking at it. It uh, just came out that uh, AOC was talking to Paul Gosar. They don't like each other. Paul Gosar has really talked about uh, AOC in very derogatory terms. And they are having a really close conversation while the votes are going on. So, Hakeem Jeffrey may not become the speaker. But there is something which I'm looking at that uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy may not become the speaker either. Right. But, you know, I can see that. I mean, you know, ultimately there's going to have to be a Republican, I guess, and the Democrats may have to do it. <clears throat> and so there's going to be some horse trading. But are they going to be honest brokers? <laughs> I, I doubt it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, mean, I know. I, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, it's it's great press to say that that AOC is talking to Paul Gosar, that they, they maybe they'll break bread and and things will ha you know happen. But I, I think I think I mean, this is I this is how AOC, but I couldn't trust Paul Gosar. Yeah, this is how they talked about uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, the blue wave and red waves, so that's where the media gets confused. If somebody is talking to somebody, they immediately, it's like, why they are talking? You know, um, somehow we have reached at that point in history in this uh, uh, democracy that where, where two opposition party people are having a friendly chat, there are a lot of people from the media out there speculating Oh, what could be happening, why it could be happening, why it cannot be this, why it cannot be that way. And that's what I think is happening right now. Right, because they don't know what's going on. They have to fill space. And they can't look like they don't know what they're talking about. So they have to, they have to look at something and say, even, oh, even, maybe it's this. Even though they know they don't know what they are talking about, but still they have to talk about. Right. <laughs> look, they spent the last two years saying that Trump was going to be running for president. And he was a, and he is the uh, leader. I mean, and totally ignoring any of the other legal problems that he was co going to be facing. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, well, I will make a prediction. I doubt if Trump will be a uh, presidential candidate by the end of 2023. You know, I'm sure he's going to be in a courtroom before then. Uh, but there is a probability also right now that because he is good at um, showmanship and he may kill the other people to become the candidate, even though he may have the legal fight going on at the same time. What do you say? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure he's going to keep at it because, first of all, he doesn't really care about the Republican Party. He only cares about himself. Secondly, I think he believes that I, you are talking about Republican Party. He doesn't care about America. Oh, I know. Okay. But I think he believes <clears throat> that if he's a candidate, that creates a certain level of legal immunity for him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they they won't be able to touch him, mm. which I don't believe is going to be the case. Yeah. So, again, I think uh, Kevin McCarthy is soon going to be history. He has to withdraw. The three, yep. three time it has already happened. So, they probably are going to go back uh, tomorrow for the fourth round, right? Yeah. Unless they come out with somebody else, uh, uh, we won't know till probably uh, till tomorrow. Well... I don't. I, you, I, I, I'm not not following currently. But before we went on the air, I would notice. I know that they had the third vote, and there was some talk about Kevin McCarthy keeping everybody there and trying to mm -hmm. wear people mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if that's the case or not. But the Democrats are united, so they're not going to be. Uh, uh, they'll they'll just be there. I mean, they don't need to do anything. It's really the Repu the heavy lifting has to be the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Well, that is true, you know, because of course, uh, Democrats, they know they are minority. They, there is no way they will go for the speakership of, or anything um, unless we have 10 Republicans uh, changing the party, joining the Democratic Party, and then... Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think there are two ways. One is that if... That would happen, getting, right? Hakeem Jeffries has been getting 212 votes. It's the majority of the, of the Congress people that are there. So I think 218 is the number. So yeah, he, needs six is the number. To he needs six Republicans to vote for him. Except, um, I believe, if people just vote present, mm -hmm. then that reduces the number. Mm -hmm. So let's say 10 people vote present. Mm -hmm. Right now they have 222 or 221, whatever the number is. If 20 people, 10 people vote present and they don't vote for a candidate, then Hakeem Jeffries would become the speaker, the speaker. with 212 and, votes. And that will be interesting because uh, the, then the rule is that they cannot take the speaker down till the next election, right? Right now as we talk. Except if the Republicans have made the House rules... Uh -huh. I think they said any five people can bring the can call into question whether the uh, speaker they have to take a, a vote on whether the speaker stays. In. Okay, uh, so, give me your final thoughts before we wrap up the show. <clears throat> about what? About what is going on right now and what uh, should be oh. expected. <clears throat> well, the Republicans in disarray. I mean, that's that's the theme that should be constantly expressed. They are in disarray. They have no moral backbone. They allow liars and cheats. <laughs> and, 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 and um, I mean, there's a Yiddish word called schnur, which is a cheapskate, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Somebody who's a chiseler, you know? I mean, they're, they're tax cheats. They don't care about uh, they basically care about their own power and their own profit but that's, yeah that's, I know they got the power but they are not using the power because they don't know how to use it no they don't have the power because they're only one house out of three if they oh. had two houses out of three then they would have some clout right now they don't have the clout wow. so whatever they this, they can be they can <clears throat> obstruct in, in this, in this um, um, 
cycle these next two years i doubt if the house Repo uh, republicans would have much clout anyway because based on how they are starting and uh, no agenda except taking the rights away from the people whether those are the rights for the lgbtq or other minorities um, uh, you know pointing out the what book to be uh, uh, can be put out in the library and what cannot I don't know beside that what else they will have to offer to the people and how they would uh, succeed. No, they don't. And all they're doing is creating um, uh, uh, proposals that they can go and run onto media and say, oh, look, we're doing this and the Democrats are, are um, obstructing, are keeping us from doing it for you. Send us more money and we'll do a better job. But the other part of it is where they can really do damage is if we have to have the debt ceiling increase and they don't want to pass anything, then you can see everybody getting into great financial difficulty because of them doing that. And they're, they're total nihilists. They don't really care. They are like the Russians, you know, sending in missiles and not caring who they, who they hit or destroy as long as they create destruction. Hmm. Okay, thanks, Charlie. Thank you for uh, uh, coming in. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. And uh, I'm pretty sure as much as you are that you will be back on the show. And uh, we will talk. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Happy Same to you. And uh, that also reminds me to share with you that uh, Happy New Year. We are already in 2023. Today is the third day of 2023. And uh, we are actually uh, looking at a very fascinating aspect of this new year, and uh, which is the election of the Speaker of the House in, uh, after the election. But before I go, there is something you know, which I would like to share with you about um, uh, this war which is going on between Ukraine and Russia that uh, I will try to talk about it uh, maybe in the next show when I come back next Tuesday that how India can benefit from this war, um, which India is already doing it, and uh, what are the effects of this war. doesn't matter which way the war finishes, whether Russia ultimately ends up keeping part of Ukraine or Ukraine ends up completely uh, freeing up their occupied area, whatever happens. But one thing is for sure that whatever we had um, since the World War II, <clears throat> number one, number two, after the collapse of USSR, that order is not going to be the same anymore. And how India can benefit from that. Um, there are policies where I differ with the current Prime Minister of India, but at the same time, there are things which are being done which are beneficial to the India from the broader perspective and uh, we are going to talk about it uh, next Tuesday. So with that note, till next time, good night and good luck.